Hello, everybody! Watch this video to find out how to recover data from a RAID system based on a Thicus NAS device model N4100 Pro, how to create a RAID, how to configure network access, add a shared folder, create an ISCSI volume, and configure network access permissions. Thicus is a popular network storage manufacturer providing various NAS equipment both for home and business use. Many Thicus systems use RAID, RAID 0 and RAID 1 technologies for two-disk storage systems, and RAID 5 technology for large systems consisting of three or more hard disks. Just as all systems of this kind, such devices are pretty reliable in terms of preventing data loss, although there might be a few causes to make your files disappear. One of the most widespread causes behind data loss is damage to the file system. Power failures or voltage surges may affect the controller, hard disks or other hardware parts of your NAS system. Accidental deleting, formatting or mechanical problems with hard disks can also trigger data loss. Another typical case of data loss is related to updating the system's firmware. As data stored in a NAS system is usually arranged in a RAID configuration, recovering data, files and folders from a broken-down device can become quite challenging. It happens because data is written in fragments to each of the disks that make up the RAID volume. And before you can access the data, you have to rebuild the damaged RAID system. If the data in question is of critical importance, this task should be delegated to a professional, and if you want to recover it on your own, then choosing the right tool is crucial to the success of your mission. In today's video, I'll show you how to choose a good data recovery utility to use with your NAS system to make sure that the information won't be lost. For starters, let's explore how to create a RAID system on a Thicus network storage device. Open the NAS management utility and expand the Storage tab, then switch to RAID. If this is the first time you want to create an array, click the Create button. And if you need to delete or reconfigure an existing array, click on Edit. There are options to expand or migrate the array and the Remove RAID button below. When you click on it, all disk data will be removed. Click Yes to confirm your decision. The RAID is removed successfully. In order to create a new array, click Create. Select the disks you want to include into this array, choose RAID level. If necessary, modify RAID ID and strip size. The default value is 64 KB. Select a file system and finally click the Create button below. Then click Yes to confirm your action and OK. When the RAID system is created, the option to configure shelled folders becomes available. This is where you can set access permissions and create a new folder. To create one, open the Storage tab, Share folder, click the Add button on the right, then give a name and enable access settings. After that, Click Apply and Yes to confirm your action. You have successfully created a share folder. OK. Now you can write data to this folder. Now let's configure an FTP server. To enable an FTP connection, expand the tab System Network and select FTP from the list. Check the option next to Enable and then configure additional settings. After that, click Apply and Yes to confirm the changes. Now your FTP server is on and you can access the network drive through an FTP connection and write some data to the shared folder. To create an ISCSI volume, go to the tab Storage, Space Allocation, ISCSI Target. Here, click the Add button, check the box next to Enable option, specify the size, name, and other settings. Give authentication data if necessary. Then click OK and Yes to confirm your action. The ISCSI volume is created. 
The final step is to connect it to the computer. and format in disk management. And it will appear in Windows Explorer. Hello, friends! If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog, you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. If files are removed accidentally from a hard disk inside a NAS system, or a hard disk is formatted, the disk array is misconfigured, or in other scenarios involving loss of data, loss of access to the network drive or damage to the right volume, only a specialized data recovery tool will help you restore your information. Most NAS devices are running on Linux-based operating systems, and their hard disks are formatted for EXT file system while RAID arrays are typically built with the use of MDADM or LVM technology. It becomes impossible to read their contents when such disk arrays are connected to a Windows computer directly. To read the disks and retrieve any information from there, use the tried and well-tested data recovery tool for NAS solutions – Hetman RAID Recovery. This program supports most popular file systems, technologies and RAID types, and in most cases it will be able to rebuild the damaged RAID automatically. To extract the data from the disks, take them out of the non-operable NAS device and connect them to a Windows computer. After the operating system has booted, Windows may suggest to initialize or format the drives to be able to access them. Remember to never agree to either operation, because they can erase the remaining information completely. On the other hand, Hetman RAID Recovery will identify the disks automatically, read the service information and rebuild the damaged RAID system. When you select a volume, you can see detailed information about the array below and check if the program has identified it correctly. To start looking for the files, right-click on the disk and choose Open. Now choose the scan type. When the array is built properly, file scan will be available. Click Next to start searching for lost files. Wait for the process to be over and then switch to Search results by clicking Finish. As you can see, the program has rebuilt the damaged RAID easily and found all the files stored on the network drive. If you are looking for files that have been removed, you can identify them by right crosses. Other files without such crosses are the ones scattered all over the RAID disks. Select the file you want to recover and click Recovery. Then choose the path where you want to save them, click Recovery, and finish. In the end, the files you have selected will be placed into the folder you have chosen for recovery. If you are using an ISCSI disk and you removed some files from there by mistake, there is no need to take any disks from the NAS system and connect them to a computer. Hetman RAID Recovery identifies such a disk as a physical one, and it means you can easily scan it and recover the accidentally removed data. To start the recovery process, right-click on the disk and choose Open. Select the scan type, usually a fast scan is enough, wait until it's over and check the results. As you can see, the program has found the files that have been deleted. The last step is to recover them. You can watch a detailed guide on recovering data from an ISCSI disk in one of our videos. Find the link in the description. However, when a disk is damaged or its service information is erased, 
Hetman Raid Recovery may have difficulty in automating the array rebuild process. If the program failed to rebuild the RAID with the available hard disks, but you know its properties, you can perform this operation manually with the help of the RAID constructor. To do it, open the constructor and select the Manual node option here. In the next window, fill in all the RAID properties you know, the RAID type, block order and size, and the disks it used to include, use the arrows to specify their order, and replace the missing disks with empty drives by clicking the plus button. Also, you can specify the offset that helps to locate the beginning of the disk. Sometimes the program may have difficulty in identifying it automatically, so you will have to enter the offset value manually. When you specify all the properties you know, click Add and the array you have built manually will appear in the Drive Manager. After that, start the scan Look for the files you want to recover and hit Recover. And that is all for now. Hopefully this video was useful. Remember to click the like button and subscribe to our channel. Push the bell button to receive notifications and never miss new videos. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching and good luck.